When you think about Los Angeles, public transit usually isn't the first thing that comes to mind. <coughs> Unless you're a transit-obsessed urbanist like me. <coughs> but over the past 30 years, Los Angeles has actually been building out an extensive regional transit network. You have agencies in the region such as Metrolink, which has been doing a really good job converting a commuter rail network into a more regional rail network. With projects like the Antelope Valley Line and the Metrolink Arrow, which I actually covered in an earlier video. Now, Metrolink is definitely doing a fine job, but the real star of the growing transit network Network in Los Angeles is Metro LA. Starting off with the Metro A line, an LRT line opening in 1990, and then immediately following it with the B line, a heavy rail metro opening in 1993. And now you can see the map has definitely grown immensely since then. But there's two lines that stand out from the rest of them. Take a look at the symbols for every line. Normal, 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 nor- wait. Why is the G line a square? Okay, let's get back into it. Normal. Hey, the J line's also a square. Wait, why are there so many squares among my beautiful circles? Well, the reason for this is that the G and the J are quite different from the rest of the network. So let's take a look at these lines and see how a couple of busways got onto the LA Metro network map. Like many other modern transit lines in the Los Angeles area, the G-Line's origins come from the Pacific Electric Railway, otherwise known as the Red Cars. With Pacific Electric's Red Car service beginning in the early 20th century on this right-of-way and service stopping on this right-of-way in 1952. Now, in the mid-20th century, Los Angeles practically abandoned everything but buses and cars in terms of transportation around the city. So this right-of-way here sat empty for nearly 40 years. However, in the 90s, Los Angeles began to have a resurging interest in public transit. So Metro Los Angeles jumped at the opportunity to buy this right-of-way. And at first, they wanted to build an extension to the red line using this right-of-way. However, a little fun thing called political opposition and nimbyism ended up stalling this extension by forcing it to be a deep-bore tunnel. This would have been really expensive to build this deep-bore tunnel. However, Metro Los Angeles was not deterred. They put it up to a vote and eventually the idea of extending the B-Line down this right-of-way finally came to an end when the county opposed the sales tax to fund the extension. However, that didn't mean that Metro wasn't going to use the right-of-way, because they had already bought it, so why not use it? So they decided to turn it into a busway. And in October of 2005, the first portion of the G-Line was opened for service. Side note, the G-Line is also paralleled by the G-Line Bikeway, which provides trail access not just for recreation, but also for commuters as well. Well. Personally, I really love this touch, and I think all transitways should have some multi-use trails paralleling them. But enough of this tangent, let's get back on track or busway in this case. The G-Line would then see a further extension north, up to Chatsworth in 2012, providing a connection to Metrolink services. But now, let's go take a look at Metro's other busway. <laughs> While the Silver Line, now officially known as the J-Line, didn't start running its modern service until 2009, the infrastructure that the J-Line runs on has a much older history dating back to the 1970s. Built during the peak of car-dependent planning in LA, the El Monte Busway was designed as a way to decrease commute times and traffic on the San Bernardino Freeway between El Monte and downtown. With the construction of the original 11-mile segment of busways starting in 1972 and getting a formal dedication of completion in 1975, the El Monte would also get a further mile-long extension towards downtown in 1989. This segment of busway is also shared with other agencies in the region, such as Foothill Transit, which partially operates the Silver Streak BRT line along this busway. The second major busway that the J-Line uses is the Harbor Transit Way. The transit way was built along the 110 freeway as a way to reduce traffic and improve travel times between southern LA and downtown. With construction beginning on the transit way in 1990, and being completed in 1996. Now, in the early 2000s, Metro had two busways both running into downtown LA, and they got the idea to merge the two lines into a single line that would through run downtown LA. Now, the Silver Line went through a few different iterations of service under different names, but the routing of the line generally stayed the same. On top of this, in 2012, the J-Line received bus lanes and signal priority at lights to help keep the service moving through the portion of the route that doesn't use busways. 
The G line begins its service at North Hollywood Station, where you can connect to other local Metro bus lines and the Metro B line. From there, the busway runs west in the San Fernando Valley, stopping at Laurel Canyon, Valley College, Woodman, Van Nuys, Sepulveda, Woodley, Balboa, Reseda, Tampa, Pierce College, DeSoto, and Canoga. After Canoga, the G Line begins running north, stopping at Sherman Way, Roscoe, and Nordoff, before finally stopping at Chatsworth, which is a connecting point with Metrolink's Ventura County Line and Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner, a regional Amtrak service that runs in Southern California. The J Line begins down in San Pedro, running north and stopping more frequently before it jumps onto the Harbor Transit Way, and continues heading north, stopping off at Pacific Coast Highway and Carson, before taking a quick detour off of the transitway to stop at the Harbor Gateway Transit Center. From there, the line continues north on the transitway, stopping at Rosecrans, Harbor Freeway, which has a connection to the C line, Manchester, Slauson, and 37th Street, USC. From there, the line runs northeast into downtown LA, making more localized stops, and then begins running east. After stopping at Los Angeles Union Station, the line then hops onto the El Monte Busway, and continues east, stopping at LA General Medical Center, Cal State LA, and finally ending at the El Monte Station. Both the G and the J lines run 24 hours a day, every day of the week, with service on the G line ranging every 4-8 to eight minutes during rush hour, service ranging from every 8 to 15 minutes off-peak, and service ranging from every 20 to 60 minutes overnight. The J-Line sees similar service during the day as well, however buses run slightly less frequently to San Pedro during the day, and only run between 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, while these aren't trains, let's take a look at the rolling stock of the G and the J. First up, the G Line. They use battery electric XC60s from New Flyer, meaning that this route has zero tailpipe emissions and a modern bus fleet running on the route. The J does vary from the G in terms of rolling stock, as they operate the K9M from the company BYD on the J Line. This is a battery electric bus, however they also do operate combo buses from Nobby, which run off of compressed natural gas. One of the best things about transit in LA is its pricing. Both the G and J lines cost $1.75 to ride, and this price includes two hours of free transfers to other transit services. But do you know what's cheaper than even one ride on the LA Metro? My Patreon, because you can get extra content, early access to videos, your name in the credits, and more. The link is down below, but let's get back into the video. Transit in Los Angeles is looking at a bright future when it comes to building out a more transit accessible city, and both the G and the J lines are looking at bright futures. Let's start with the G. The G is actually suffering a lot from its success. With the line nearly reaching capacity for the busway, there needs to be upgrades made to the corridor. Eventually, the plan for the G line is to convert it into a light rail line, which would be able to handle the ridership demand. But for now, the city has suggested using double articulated buses, or running convoys of buses to help accommodate the demand in the meantime, while the conversion is still ongoing. The J line has been seeing insane growth, having ridership grow nearly every year outside of 2020. And with this growth comes the need to make possible changes to the line. One of these proposed changes has been to get rid of the San Pedro section of the J line. The J buses are either numbered 910 or 950, with the 950 buses continuing all the way into San Pedro. Metro, however, wants to remove this San Pedro section of the line so they can run a fully battery electric bus fleet on the J. However, one thing that stopped them from canceling the San Pedro service has been local pushback. This pushback, while preventing the J line from converting to full battery electric operations, has protected the one-ride transit connection between San Pedro and other communities in the Los Angeles metro area. A lot of this future funding for busway rolling stock, modernization, and the future conversion to light rail comes from a bill called Measure M. This was a half a cent sales tax passed in 2017 that provided a whole bunch of funding not only for transit, but also for pedestrian infrastructure, earthquake retrofitting, and also subsidizing ticket prices on Metro, making it more affordable than any other major city in the country. LA is in the midst of a massive plan to undo a lot of the car-dependent sprawl in America's second largest city. Not only does it have Metro in the midst of a transit boom, building multiple subway, light rail, and bus rapid transit lines, but it also has Metrolink, which is converting itself from a commuter rail system based around 9 to 5 commuters, into a regional rail system for getting around the region at all times of the day. And to top 
top all of this off, the city of LA just approved a bill which makes it easier to make streets safer for pedestrians and adds a bunch of funding in order to make these changes. The G and J lines are both major parts of this vision to improve transit in America's second largest city. And while they might be busways at the moment, it wouldn't be surprising to see them become rail transit to help move people around the Los Angeles metro area in a congestion-free, affordable, and sustainable way. But have you ever taken the G or the J? Do you like the busways in the LA metro system? Would you like to see them get converted to light rail? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Here's a thank you to everybody who helped me make this video. And here's a very special thank you to all of my patrons, especially Tony Stunts, who's in my Metro tier. Want to support the channel and get benefits like your name in the credits, early access to content, extra content, and more? Then consider joining my Patreon. The link is down below. Also, while you're down there, be sure to check out my other links to my social media pages. I post updates and extra content there. Guys, it's been a couple weeks since my last video, and I've been very appreciative of your patience. Thank you so much for watching this video if you've gotten this far, and as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.